Have you ever made a mistake so big that it just ruined your entire life? And then they looked back and said, If only I could go back, then everything would be all right. If you've ever done this, you know, as I do, that often our lives and our happiness depend on one assumption, choice, decision, or omission. Sometimes there are predators who help push us into these terrible decisions. I met such a predator, and she helped me ruin my life. I'm standing at the end of the street from my house right now, watching my front door through binoculars. I hope for another chance to get my life back, no matter what. No, that doesn't fit at all. You don't know me or anything about me, and you don't know how I got here or the details. I guess I should start somewhere from the beginning. My name is Joyce Brooks. I'd like to tell you that I'm a tall, blonde, Nordic supermodel type, but I'd be damn untruthful because none of that is true. I'm 37 years old, have brown hair, and I'm barely 5'1", so it's hard to be tall. I'm neither thin nor fat. I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't have huge breasts, and the ones I do have don't look at the ceiling for a long time. Both my breasts and my butt gave in to the fight against gravity years ago. My belly is quite soft and round, but that never bothered my husband Greg. This stupid man loved my body with all its flaws. In fact, he worshipped every part of me as if I were something valuable. Every night when we lay in bed and saw all those Hollywood types on TV running around in their short skirts and high heels with their flat stomachs, he would hug me tenderly. I told him to stop rubbing my belly because it was round and soft. He told me he made it this way by putting his children in it, and he loved it. Then he would start rubbing himself against my ass, so I knew what he wanted. And two or sometimes three times a week, I let him get what he wanted. God, what a fool I was. When I look at it now, I should have realized, no, it wasn't my biggest mistake, but you're right. It takes me a long time. Be patient. I'm trying to show you what my life was like before. Anyway, Greg was 36. Yes, I robbed the cradle. He was born exactly one year and two days after me. We grew up in the same small town, played together as children, went to school and college together, and got married soon after. We both looked for and found jobs in Chicago, so we moved here shortly after we got married. We have two children, a boy and a girl. We waited until we were financially stable to have them. Our son Jeff is eight, and his sister Katie is six. We live in a beautiful colonial in a very nice neighborhood on the outskirts of Chicago. Everything in my life was wonderful. There was nothing left for my husband, my life, or my family— I just went crazy and ruined everything. Even my job, although boring, was not stressful or demanding. I worked from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Friday, as a clerk for a shipping and receiving company. All I had to do was process and print invoices that someone else turned into shipping labels, labels that another person put on packages and sent them to someone else. I was just one link in a very large system. I think that was the problem. As I approached 40, I began to think of myself as simple and boring. It seemed to me that everyone around me had a fun and interesting life, and I was just another gray housewife. If I died, the world wouldn't even notice. That's exactly how I felt on the day it all started, and my happy life ended. Greg took time off work to take me out to lunch. Even then, he was a wonderful husband. He noticed my emotional mood swings and tried to cheer me up. He had just walked me back to my desk and kissed me goodbye when she walked up to me. Hi, Joyce, she said. She, being Wanda Newcastle, is the hot girl in the office and a woman. I'm sure you all know this guy. She has long, bleached blonde hair, large breasts, and a cute little voice. She laughs at all the guy's jokes, sometimes even the funny ones. She doesn't mind when guys accidentally rub against her and sometimes she even does it herself. She constantly disappears into the storage room throughout the week, and although she never seems to work, her work still gets done. This opened my eyes a little because, up until that point, I was sure that Wanda had never spoken more than two words to any woman in our office. There were rumors that her voice was heard only by men. I was sure that she had never addressed me even with one syllable. You look a little depressed today, she said, I just thought I'd come over and see if there's anything I can do to make you feel better. It's nothing, I said. 
just the emotional ups and downs that all women go through from time to time. I understand, she said, and of course, everyone around us is so busy with their own affairs that they never think to ask about us. I started to think that maybe I had made a mistake about Wanda. She didn't seem that bad. As if I haven't had enough problems, she began. My family tries to make the fact that my sister is 28 and single somehow my problem. If my mother says to me, Wanda, you know a lot of men. Can you make her friends with someone? One more time, I'll scream. Suddenly, finding a man for my little sister became my main goal in life, according to my mom. I keep telling her that the men I know would not be good candidates for my sister's marriage. They are only good for fun and no-strings-attached relationships, she said, winking at me. I blushed deeply at her hint. God, how stupid I was. But Wanda, aren't you married? I asked. Of course I'm married, she said. But a little spice on the side makes us both happy, if you know what I mean. I love Danny to death, and he loves me. But the man changes secretaries like teenagers change panties. None of them are anything to him. Does not mean. We talked about clothes, weather, and people at work for about 20 minutes. I was dying of impatience. Then Wanda slowly started talking about other things. When she mentioned club, I was all ears. Danny and I are part of a group of people who get together from time to time for adult fun, she said. It doesn't have a specific name. We just call it a club. It's really helped me become the woman I am today. It's made my life more exciting and my marriage better, she said. I was completely bored and uninteresting, she said. As soon as we joined the club, I began to value myself and my marriage more. It made me more confident, and a confident woman is a sexy woman. You'd be surprised how many men are attracted to that confidence. I never had the courage to even dress like that. The way I dress now, before I joined the club. I always wondered why any man would even want to look at me. How do I join this club? I asked. I should have noticed that her whole line sounded like a damn advertisement. Joyce, are you sure you're interested in something like this? She asked. Your marriage seems pretty strong the way it is. Well, my marriage is strong, I said. But he could use a little spice, like you mentioned. How does your husband feel about this? She asked. He loves me, I said. If I approach this the right way, I'm sure I can convince him to agree. Why don't you come to our house for dinner this weekend, she said. Maybe I can help you bring it up. It will make it easier when you ask him to try the club. On Friday night, everything blew up. We had a nice dinner at Wanda's house with two other couples. This was a great way to start. This was clearly not the first time Wanda and her friend Mary had done this. The food was great and the drinks strong. Unbeknownst to me, they had slightly spiked Greg's drinks to reduce his inhibitions. After dinner, we were all sitting around talking, and the next thing I noticed was Greg sitting on the couch between Mary and Wanda. The three of them were laughing and chatting. Wanda came up to me and whispered for me to just relax and go for it. Try something new, she told me. Wanda's husband Danny and Mary's husband Todd were all around me, complimenting me and telling me how great I even colder. For the first time in our marriage, I had no idea what my husband was thinking. I'm leaving, he said. Wanda stood between him and the door. Greg, you probably shouldn't drive. We put something in your drinks to make you relax. Let Joyce drive you home, Wanda said. If we're both under the influence, why would she be in better condition to drive than me? He snapped sharply. Joyce is in trouble, Wanda said. She... Wanda never finished her statement. The ambulance arrived and paramedics began knocking on the door. When Wanda let them in, Greg pulled out his cell phone. He called our housemate and gave him Wanda's address. He asked Dave and his wife Tina to come and pick him up. Dave's wife could drive their car back and Dave could drive our car. Greg, we need to talk, I said. I can lead us home. You're not going home, he replied sharply. I don't want to see you for a while. At least until I clear my head. I don't care where you go. Stay with your parents, at the hotel, or here with your new friends, but don't come home. He went outside to wait for Dave. I went outside to wait with him, but he told me to leave him. 
Finally, when Dave arrived, I heard Greg ask him if they could stop by the clinic on their way home. I stupidly thought that maybe he was feeling bad. Greg, honey, I'll call you back a little later, I said. Don't call me. I'll call you myself, he answered coldly. He didn't even look at me when he left. I started to panic. Paramedics loaded Todd into the ambulance. Mary went with them. They took him to the hospital. Danny had a broken nose and a deep cut under his lower lip. Neither man said anything to the doctors. They thought Danny and Todd were fighting over a bet. Greg stayed away from this. When Wanda and I took Danny to the ambulance, we were silent the whole way there. Wanda had a small smile on her lips the whole way. I couldn't understand what could be funny. This, in itself, should have told me that things were not as I thought. While Danny's nose was being set, Wanda and I talked. She told me not to worry about anything. Mary already knew what to say. She and Wanda had already come up with a story. Both Danny and Todd will tell the police that they had an argument over a bet. None of them will apply, and it will all end. Why would they agree to this? I asked. Because if we tell the truth, the five of us, including you, will go to jail for drugging your husband without his knowledge, she said. We'll all spend time in jail, and you could end up divorced. He'll probably get away with it because he didn't know anything about our actions. His attack on the guys could probably even be attributed to substances. It's better that way. I never gave Wanda credit for her intelligence, but she was clearly a smart woman. How do you feel? She asked. I know it all seems bad, but it showed us a few things we needed to know. Such as what? I asked. I felt terrible at that moment. I was completely out of touch with reality. Little did I realize that I couldn't go home and that, for the first time in my adult life, Greg wouldn't have his arms around me as I fell asleep. I know what's wrong with your marriage, she said. It's not you. It's Greg. He's the reason you're bored. He's holding you back. You're an explorer. You're meant to go out and try new things. He, on the other hand, is a homebody. He just wants things to stay the same. You need to go out and try new things and new sensations. Then you can bring them back home and try them with him. This way you will get the best of both worlds. You will be able to keep the freshness in your marriage. And also save your marriage. If only you would continue like this, you would end up in divorce. Never, I answered sharply. No matter how bad things got, I would never divorce Greg. I love him too much. Then you better pull yourself together and try to do something to save your marriage in the long run before it's too late, she said. I saw you when Danny put his hand under your skirt. You weren't surprised, were you? I nodded my head. But at the same time, you weren't excited, were you? She asked. I shook my head. She was absolutely right. I wasn't turned on by Todd or Danny at all. I was more curious about the novelty of having someone other than Greg touch me. The sensations, although not unpleasant, were far from exciting. If I had thought about it, or if she had been a little less cunning... I would have seen the flaw in her logic. So you need to get out there and find out why you're so sexually repressed, she said. You need to learn more about your sexuality instead of letting your husband influence it. Then you can work through a few things and give them back to him, making your sex life and your marriage better. This, of course, was pure nonsense, but I bought it. How will I do this? I asked. Feed me too much bullshit at once. In my own head, I had doubts about what had happened. I knew Greg was honest and loved me very much. If only I had thought about his reaction and his reasons for it, we might have been okay. Greg never called me back that night. When he didn't call me on Saturday or Saturday night, I started going crazy with worry. On Sunday, I called him. My call went straight to voicemail. I left him several messages and he finally called me back. Joyce, I'm going to take the kids to the zoo this morning, he said. We're leaving in a few minutes. We'll be gone until at least four o'clock this afternoon. In the meantime, come home and pack enough clothes and your belongings to last you for a while. Why don't I just come home so we can talk? I asked. Because my lawyer doesn't think a conversation would be good for us right now, he said. Which lawyer? I asked. Joyce, you and your friends are in big trouble, he said. I've been to the clinic. They found traces of illegal substances in my system. I'm considering filing for it. And whether or not I do, I'm considering divorce. After that, I couldn't function. 
I couldn't even hold the phone. I started screaming and Wanda ran into the room. She calmed me down and we started planning what to do. Of course, it was Wanda who convinced me to ask for a trial separation. We had a meeting with my lawyer and Greg's lawyer. Greg was still very angry with me. My lawyer managed to convince him not to file a claim against us. He told him that seeing his mother in prison would not be good for our children. He also told them that there was no chance of filing a complaint against others without dragging me into it. I'd like to think Greg still loved me enough to not want to see me in jail, but I could be wrong. In the divorce case, my lawyer was again very convincing. He reminded Greg that we had been married and happy for a very long time. To just throw it all away for what essentially boils down to someone touching my leg would be crazy. He also reminded him that I am at the age of midlife crisis. Perhaps my hormones were unstable and I was suffering from a medical problem. Greg eventually agreed to a trial separation of five months. We agreed that Greg would have physical custody of the children. Because our children were too young to accept big changes in their lives, Greg wanted me to agree to give up visitation rights until I came to my senses. I wanted to see them once or twice a week and talk to Greg when I needed to. He said no. I knew that Greg would take excellent care of the children, so we agreed. Greg and I will meet every two weeks. He will tell me about the kids and anything else I ask at those times. At the end of five months, if our problems are not resolved, we will divorce, allowing the arbitrator to determine the terms. I knew we would never get divorced. I would never let him leave. I love him too much for that. But Wanda was right. Separation would give me time to explore myself and figure out how I want my life to turn out. I went into the meeting ready to let Greg get custody of the children. Like I said, I knew he would take great care of them. And like Wanda said, I needed to see myself as a woman, not just a wife and mother. I was shocked that Greg agreed to a date every two weeks. I think he still didn't want to let me go, despite what he said. Why couldn't I see it then? Perhaps my head was too full. Greg had problems the first two weeks. He used our parents to help with the kids, but it just didn't work. My heart went out to him and I almost called him to beg him to stop the separation. My family thought I was stupid. In fact, my own mother called me an idiot to my face. My father just shook his head. Wanda came to my rescue again. She knew the perfect person to help Greg take care of my children. This woman would also regularly report to me on how my children and my husband were doing. Like a spy. It was mean, but it would also calm some of my fears about Greg finding someone else. I met Greg at a restaurant on our first date. I was as excited as a schoolgirl. He looked so handsome that I almost immediately wanted to finish the separation. I really wanted to feel his hands on me, but he didn't even touch me. I told him about a woman who could help him and gave him her phone number. He looked at me all night. I could tell he missed me. He gave me reports on how the children were. How are you, dear? I asked. My name is Gregory or Greg, he answered sharply. Don't call me darling. And how do you think I feel? I feel like my heart has been ripped out. Why are you doing this to us? No, don't answer. I already know. You wanted to have an affair, so you found a way to do it legally. He looked into my eyes, and I don't know what he saw. Well, I hope you're happy. We'll be divorced in 18 weeks, he said sharply. Greg, it won't come to that, I said. I'm just going through something. I felt bored and unattractive. So you think that in order for you to feel attractive, you need to... I mean, be bored with other men, right? He asked. Well, you'll end up like your friend Wanda, and there will be a divorce because I can't live with a bitch. I never intended to take you back after the separation. I just... My eyes widened when I heard what he said. What did he mean by, like Wanda? And he agreed to the separation only to get divorced without a fight. It's not like that, Greg, I said, crying. I didn't sleep with anyone. Bye, he interrupted me. I can't stand it. See you in two weeks, maybe. He then simply threw the money on the table and walked out of the restaurant, leaving me crying and begging him to come back. For the next few days, I was depressed. Wanda, where I was staying, began giving me daily reports about Greg and my children. Wanda's husband often went on business trips and was almost always absent. She went out almost every night. I could tell she missed him when he was away. 
According to Wanda, the woman who watched my children was in her late 20s and had a degree in child development, so she was quite capable of helping Greg with my kids. She moved into the guest room in my house. Several alarm bells rang in my head when Wanda told me about the woman who had moved into my house. It's better for you that she lives there, Wanda told me. That way, if he starts dating or seeing someone, you'll know to stop it or go home. Plus, this way, if you need to see him without warning, he'll have a built-in babysitter. That night, Wanda started working on me. She has already started making me drink at night. That night when she returned from her date, she was not alone. She brought a man with her. We all sat, drank, and chatted. I started to feel warm and cozy. Next thing I know, this man was on top of me, and I was so disoriented that it was like I was watching it from outside. I didn't react or enjoy it, I just watched it happen. The next morning when I woke up, I had a headache and knew that I had ruined my marriage. Wanda came in bright and early with a sad look on her face. It might not work, she said. What might not work? I asked. I didn't really care what she said. I was filled with regret for what I had just allowed to happen to me. Save your marriage, she said. This may not work. I just started laughing. How could this be worse? I screamed. I just cheated on the man I love. When he finds out, he'll never take me back. How will he know? She asked. It didn't happen in public. The only people who know about it are you, me, and Bill. Bill won't tell because he's married and he heard how Greg could get violent because of you. You're not going to tell me, and neither will I. Then why do you think it won't work? I asked. She looked down at her feet. Bill said it was the worst sex he'd ever had. You couldn't relax even after all the stuff we put in your drink. He couldn't even get you aroused, she said. If you want to save your marriage, you need to open up and do it better, she said. Don't you want to save your marriage? Don't you want to go back to your boring life? Honestly, at that moment my boring little life seemed like a dream. I had night sweats and hot flashes. I kept dreaming about some woman having sex with Greg in our bed. At that moment, I thought the only way to get Greg back was to follow the plan. Greg canceled our next meeting. He told me about the children over the phone. When I asked about him, he simply hung up. I was actually glad that he canceled our date. I was too nervous to go. I was sure that he would look at me and immediately understand that I had slept with other men. If you can call it a dream. I continued to try to relax, but every time Wanda brought a man home, it felt like rape. Then Wanda began recording the episodes so we could discuss them. What a fool I was. She made me watch adult videos. Then I tried to let some guy have sex with me, but it just didn't feel right. I knew deep down that every damn time I cheated on Greg. Wanda taught me everything. Finally, it was time for my first visit to the club. The plan was that I would go with Wanda first, and after I went back to Greg, we would eventually work it out enough that we could both participate. I didn't see it happening because I would have killed any woman who touched my husband. After a few weeks, it was easy for me to walk into a room full of people, get naked, and have sex with several strained men, and then return to Wanda's house. I never really enjoyed myself, but I started to notice what men liked. Wanda said I was making progress. This whole process was about me letting go of my inhibitions enough to find out what my partner liked. I could make sex much better for Greg, which in turn would improve our marriage. Wanda also told me that another thing that upset me was Greg's higher sex drive. Now I'm so used to sex that I could have it whenever Greg wants it. Again, this would make Greg happier. I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. The next day, my mother called. She asked me if I was out of my ass yet. What are you talking about, Mom? I asked her. You realize your husband is dating and he looks happy, she said. I thought my heart had stopped. She continued to say that a few days ago she stopped by the house to see the children. When she asked them if they missed me, they told her that at first they did, but now they had a new mother. She offered to babysit them for one night so Greg could get out. As Greg got the kids out of the car, a very beautiful young woman with long honey hair and a very sweet smile got out of the Mustang to help them out of the back seat. My mom told me that the woman was very shy, but she had a very nice personality. 
and if I didn't mind her dating Greg, then she didn't mind either. The woman even asked my mom for some of her recipes for dishes that my mom made that Greg liked. She did the same with Greg's mom. In other words, some girl was trying to take my place, and Wanda's spy fell asleep at her post. I couldn't sleep that night. All my nightmares about Greg came back. I cried until I was exhausted. The next morning, I decided I needed to talk to Greg. I realized that this was against our rules, but I called Greg anyway. My daughter picked up the phone. Hello? She said. Hi, Katie. It's Mom, I said. Just hearing my baby's voice made me feel better. She sounded so happy and normal that it allowed me to relax a little. For about half a second, I felt good. Liz, it's old mommy, she said, hanging up and running out of the room. I heard her playing happily with her brother. Hi, this is Eliza, came the voice on the phone. This is Joyce, I said hotly. Why didn't you tell me about this new woman Greg is dating? Who is this? She asked and hung up. She spoke as if I was calling for a prank. When Wanda came in, I told her what happened, and she swore she would get to the bottom of it. She was sure Greg had met someone at work. This was the one place her girlfriend couldn't cover. Perhaps Wanda could talk her into going to Greg's office and meeting her under the pretext that she would ask Greg something about the kids. Wanda will begin implementing this plan as soon as we return from the club. I'm tired of the club. It has always been this way. It was far worse than my life with Greg had ever been. On the surface, it seemed exciting. You went in and had sex with a bunch of different men and women. They all bring with them different experiences, different likes and dislikes. So sex should never be boring. And it should be varied and always fresh. It was like a big party. But that was on the surface. The reality was that every time I went there, a group of guys had me endlessly. Sex was more of an ego competition than anything else. Sex with Greg was so much better than this that I couldn't believe I did it. I finally asked myself, why am I here? I should have been home with my husband and my children. The next morning I skipped work and went to see my lawyer. I asked him to contact Greg's lawyer and stop the separation. When I returned to Wanda's house, I sensed something was wrong. Some woman was just leaving her driveway when I drove up. Looking through the driver's door window of her car, she waved to me. I couldn't see her face. Everything is going according to plan and under control, Wanda said with a smile. No, I'm done with this crap, I told her. Sex in the club is boring. I hate how a bunch of guys who don't care about me or even my name have me. All they care about is their own pleasure. I don't get anything out of it. I want my husband back. I was stupid to even try it. Wow, Wanda said. I'm sorry to hear you say that. I thought you were enjoying yourself. Thanks for everything, Wanda. You're a great friend, I said. She simply smiled. How are you going to do this? She asked. Are you going to tell Greg at your scheduled meeting this week? Maybe you can go to a few extra sessions at the club so you're really ready for him. No, I said, smiling. I've already contacted my lawyer to end the separation. The sooner the better. And for the rest of my life, no man except Greg will touch me. What about adding some spice to your marriage? She asked. The only thing in my marriage that needed some spice was me, I told her. I've been thinking about all this a lot lately. I already have a perfect life. I've just stuck my head in the sand for too long to realize it. My husband loves me. He would make love to me every night if I would let him. So he clearly still wants me after all these years. And you know I felt unattractive? If that were true, why the hell would Greg be lying next to me? rubbing my belly and telling me he loved me all the time? To Greg, I'm attractive. I'm his supermodel. And his opinion of my looks is what really matters. After all these weeks of being picked on by guys at the club, I've learned that sex is best when it's between two people who love each other. It's much more special that way than when it's just a group of people using someone's body for self-gratification. Wanda didn't look very good when I told her this. Now I know that it was because her plan was not yet completed. What about this woman he may or may not be dating? She asked. Don't you want to know? I thought for a moment. If Greg was seeing someone, it would be my fault, I said. But after what I did at your club, I have no right to complain. The next day, I skipped work again. I had an idea of what I wanted to do during the day. 
One of the things I felt the worst about was leaving my children. I decided to go to their school and watch Greg pick them up and take them home. Then I would call him and tell him the news, and maybe we could get together as a family. To be honest, I was a little upset when I heard my daughter call me an old mom. In the language of a six-year-old, when something is old, it is no longer needed or desired. Like, my old doll means that I now have a new, better one, and the old one is just here because I don't care to throw it away. I think what bothered me the most was if I was an old moom, there had to be a new moom. This really started to ring alarm bells in my heed, but I decided that in the life of a six-year-old, five months is a long time to be away. I sat by the phone waiting for a call from my lawyer, and when he didn't call by 3 out p.m., I drove to school. The school has changed little since I was last here. In fact, since Greg usually picked up the kids, I rarely had to be here. All parents wanted to arrive early to avoid traffic jams. I had only been here for a few minutes when I saw Greg's red Mustang GT pull up. I always recognized Greg's car because his brakes were the same color as the car's body. All the other things he spent all this money on didn't make sense to me, but it kind of stuck in my head. I was really surprised when a tall, leggy woman came out of the car, woman with long, honey-blonde hair, about. She was younger than Greg and me. The first thing I thought was that she had the same brakes as Greg. God, he would get angry. Even I had to admit that she was beautiful. She had large, wide-set eyes and a smile that made it clear that this woman was happy with her life. But damn it, why shouldn't she be? She had large breasts that probably weren't sagging yet. Her legs were at least two miles long, and her ass could probably bounce a quarter off. She should be happy with her damn life. Men passing by this woman could not take their eyes off her. She hardly paid any attention to them. Her eyes were glued to the school's front door. This meant that she did not need to attract the attention of men. The only reason a woman doesn't care if men are interested in her is because she already has a man she's completely in love with. No wonder she was happy with her life. She had it all together. Then the school bell rang, and I wondered where Greg was. He usually liked to get here early, grab the kids, and leave before there was a chance to scratch his precious Mustang in traffic. Until I saw them... I never put two and two together. My mind simply refused to make the connection. Less than three minutes after the call, I realized there might be a problem. My children, two hellions carrying my DNA, ran out of the school screaming and ran up to that blonde. They hugged her and got into what I now realized was not another red Mustang with red brakes. It was my husband's damn car that he never let me drive. This bitch wasn't happy with her life. She was happy with mine. Apparently, this was the woman my mother had tried to warn me about and I had foolishly ignored. However, I have a question. If she was even going to pick up my children from school, why didn't the nanny that Wanda hired warn me about her? Something funny was happening here. I followed her to see where she went. I had this idea that she would just take the kids to my house and drop them off at the babysitter. My mother told me that everyone liked her, so maybe she charmed Wanda's nanny, too. She pulled up in my driveway and got out of Greg's damn car. She then used the key. This bitch had the key to my house, and she and my kids went inside. I knew what would happen next. I walked around the back of the house where I knew there was a tiny hole in our six-foot-high fence. She went out into the backyard. She gave the kids a snack and told them they couldn't go to the pool for an hour. Then she started planting flowers or something around the garage. She took care of my children and drove my husband's car. She even planted shit in my backyard. After about half an hour, she looked at her watch and lay down on the sun lounger. When did we receive the new garden furniture? Something else bothered me about her. If I had a body like hers, I would run around in a bikini 24 hours a day. She was wearing a regular light-colored top and long shorts. She was sexy without even trying to be but she didn't try to show off herself either. Greg then pulled into the driveway. I expected them to wave to each other and maybe talk. She jumped out of the lounge chair as if a rocket had been shoved up her ass. She ran up to him and even beat up the children who got there. She hugged him, which made me jealous. She didn't just hug him and squeeze him. She hugged him under his jacket and pressed herself against him. 
It was a gesture so intimate that it made me blush. I had spent weeks having sex with other men, but the sight of this woman hugging Greg made me more angry than I ever imagined. The sex I had with the jockeys at the club was just physical sex with no strings attached. It was insidious. The way she hugged him said it all. This bitch wanted my husband. She wasn't about to quickly roll in the hay and then move on to something else. It was a fucking forever hug that she gave Greg. Greg looked upset about something. He showed her something in a large envelope. I thought that this bitch even listened to his problems with things at work. I never did it because it was too boring. I had enough trouble concentrating on problems with my work. It was simply unfair. This bitch was already doing a better job of being Greg's wife than I was. She dragged Greg into a large, shaded hammock. At first I thought the hammock was too big. Then I realized it was a damn hammock for two. She took off his shoes and took off his tie. She set them and his jacket aside and then pulled him into the hammock. Then she just hugged him as they swayed together. I almost had a stroke watching them lay in that damn hammock. The way he held her hand and kissed it bothered me. The way she adjusted to him, these things, although far from sex, were much more intimate than any of the extreme sex I had had in the last four months. I didn't agree to this. There was no way I was going to put up with this. This bitch had to go. Even from the distance I was watching, I could tell he was becoming more relaxed as the minutes passed. After. A few minutes later, she stood up, but he did not move. I think he was sleeping. She kissed his forehead and entered the house. Naturally, my children followed her. They followed her happily, these traitors. I couldn't believe she had my children on her side. I was very angry. The more I looked, the angrier I became. Then I felt something near my ankle. I looked down and heard my neighbor's rat-sized stupid dog yapping at me. I looked up and saw Tina looking at me, holding the stupid animal. Oh, it's you, Joyce, she said. What are you doing? Hi, Tina, I said. I just wanted to see if Greg and the kids were home. God, Joyce, she said. Sorry. I guess I sometimes forget that Greg is married to you. Eliza is so sweet, and I'm so busy trying to help her that I forget about you. She shook her head at me. So, um, how does it feel? What does it feel like? I asked. You know, that wild, carefree, lonely life you dreamed of? She said. I'm sure you're having a lot of fun there and not just bored and stuck in the mud like we are. That's why I have to help Eliza. Us boring old suburban housewives have to stick together. She smiled at me. You live your life. Another guy when you want it. At first, I was a little jealous of Eliza. I mean, how could I not be? Greg is truly a great guy. If I weren't married to Dave, I would have followed him myself. Then she started telling me about their problem, so I should help her. What the hell is her problem? I snapped. Tina looked at me like I was crazy. I really think she was going to leave. You couldn't relate to it, she said. Tina, please tell me, I begged. Well, remember when we were friends and talked, she asked. I nodded sadly. I thought we were still friends. Your biggest complaint was that Greg wanted a lot more sex than you, remember? She asked. Well, obviously Greg isn't over you yet because no matter what the poor girl tried, they still haven't had sex. Never. I think I smiled when she said that. I even made her try to get him drunk, she said. I made her run around with almost nothing. This girl's body is incredible. She told me she's not that kind of girl and she can't do this to kids. I just don't understand it. On her worst day, she makes you look like a little fat boy. But Greg doesn't touch her, she said. Thanks, Tina, I said sarcastically. Sorry, Joyce, I didn't mean to offend you, but you have all your new men, and she only has one, and she loves him so much. Okay, tomorrow I'll find another guy. Greg is all she has and all she wants. She can't just leave him and his kids and go off with other guys. I knew you wouldn't understand. She actually grabbed the damn dog and walked away like I insulted her or something. Tina was the one who didn't understand. She really thought my life consisted of ice cream and roses. Like before, she probably watches too much damn TV. I didn't get to go to all the glamorous places we saw on TV. I went to a place to be with men. When I got there, I might as well have been a bitch.
None of these men wanted to talk to me, know me, or do anything with me. I've never been asked out on a date. None of them ever said or would say, bless you, if I sneezed. I was an easy girl for them. If I had said no and meant it, they would have just moved on to another woman, and there were many of them. On the other hand, Tina had a man who loved her madly. She controlled when, where, and if they had sex. And besides, what kind of sex they had. And the man she was having sex with really tried to make sure she liked it. This man wanted to take her somewhere and be with her. He wanted to grow old with her and have children with her. She was his partner in life, love, and the pursuit of happiness. Tina had all this boring stuff, which I now realized was much more exciting and better than what I had now. I wanted my life back. When I got into the car, I saw my cell phone on the seat. I had a message from my lawyer. He wanted me to call him immediately. He didn't even say hello when he answered. His first words were, Greg wants an 80-20 division of assets. Should I try to negotiate what's best for you? I might be able to get 70-30 if we offer an immediate settlement. You are crazy? I screamed. I told you months ago that I don't want a divorce. Under any circumstances. I haven't changed my position one bit. I still have two weeks left. Maybe you should come here, he said. A lot has changed here. I was on my way to his office. Along the way, I could barely concentrate. I almost crashed my car twice. I sat down in the big leather chair in my lawyer's office. Greg completed the separation ahead of schedule, he said. He wants to get a mediator involved immediately. All he wants is a division of assets. I expected him to go for a 50-50 irreconcilable difference with joint custody. No way I told you I don't want a divorce, I said. I wanted separation so I could sort out my problems. Now that I've done that, I want my husband back. He started laughing. We can't win this. Usually if one spouse wants a divorce and the other doesn't, we try to delay the case or ask for counseling, hoping they'll work out their issues in therapy and make peace. He took off his glasses and shook his head. I thought I'd seen cases like yours, but I've never seen anything like it. I thought you were just a slightly chubby housewife whose husband didn't pay enough attention to her. Or maybe you were going through a midlife crisis. You'll be separated for a few years. Weeks until he misses you so much and begs you to come back. Even if it's just so someone can clean up all the beer cans and adult tapes he's left all over the place. Maybe you'll have some cheap little adventure and you hope that your husband either doesn't find out or is willing to give you a chance and take you back. I thought that, like many wives, you love him and just want to light a little fire under him. Greg wasn't the problem, I started. You didn't just light a fire under him. You dipped matches in gasoline and lit them with a cruise rocket, he said. This morning, when his lawyer asked me for a meeting, I thought that he wanted the same thing as you. I thought we would meet, tear up the papers, and you would be at home with your husband for two hours already having made two lawyers richer and happier for both of you. This is what I want, I said sharply. His lawyer told me that Greg doesn't even want to discuss the possibility of reconciliation. There's no chance of that. And he wants an 80-20 division of assets, no child support, full custody, with supervised home visits on birthdays and some holidays. I thought this man was crazy. I knew he would get custody, but I thought you would have unlimited visitation rights. I mean, you won't get physical custody because, mother or not, you're gone from their children. Who does this? His look seemed as if he thought I was stupid. Anyway, I was ready to push them to the wall on the agreement until he said, Okay, let's not arbitrate. Let's go to court. Then he explained his case to me. Starting from there, he threw a bunch of photos and DVDs onto the table. Apparently, they were taken at Wanda's house and at the club. This is a video of you having sex with a bunch of different men while your husband tried his best to take care of your children. He also worked overtime so he could hire a nanny to come and stay with them. And finally, there is the fact that you and some of your friends may have slipped something into his drink. You also have a moral clause in your employment contract. He knows the videos and photos won't be allowed in court, but he assumes there are consequences for your job, your reputation, and your family will give them an advantage. I literally didn't know what to say. I sat with my mouth open, but nothing came of it. All I could think about was how stupid I was.
What should I tell them? He asked. More than anything, I want to meet my husband, I said. I thought that if I could just talk to Greg, I could bring us back together. He loved me too much to let me go. I thought about it, he said. He's seen your videos and he doesn't want anything to do with you. He doesn't even want to talk to you. If the social services people ever see you in action, you might never see your kids again. Why did you do that? I just ran out of his office. I didn't want to talk to anyone but Greg. The pieces of it started to come together. Now I understand why Greg was so upset. That's why this little bitch tried so hard to make him feel better. I'm sure she really wanted him to feel better about forgetting about me. I drove up to the house and started knocking on the door. I saw a head through the glass, but no one opened it. Let me in, I need to talk to Greg, I screamed. It's all a mistake. Let me in, damn it. Then my cell phone rang. I answered. Who the hell is this? I barked. Hey, Joyce, it's Elise. Even her voice sounded cheerful and soothing. I then decided that I would break the door and shove her cheerful damn voice into her sculpted ass. How dare she try to calm me down when she stole my home, my children, and my husband. The bitch has been stealing my whole life. I kicked the door even harder. Joyce, you need to calm down, she said. Greg doesn't want to talk to you. He told our lawyer to tell your lawyer. Maybe when he cools down a little it will be better. Joyce, he really loved you very much, and you broke his heart. I didn't do any of this, I screamed. I just need to explain this. Now let me in, or I'll break down the damn door and show you how to take a husband and a family. By this time, several neighbors were looking out of their windows. Some even came out of their homes. Joyce, you really need to calm down, she said. I don't understand all this. Maybe we could meet and talk about it. I don't want to talk to you, I screamed. You're some robotic bitch from Stepford who was sent to replace me. I want to talk to Greg, and I want to talk to him right now. Joyce, I'm trying to help you so we can both understand this, she said. You really should leave, Greg called the police. I'm not going anywhere. I have the right to stand in front of my own damn house, you robot bitch. I kicked the door again and started knocking on the windows trying to open one. A police cruiser pulled up behind me. Looks like one of my neighbors called the police before Greg. Move away from the house, madame, said an amplified voice behind me. This is my damn home, and I'm not going to let anyone take it away from me, I screamed. I have a damn right to my own home and my own family, damn it. Shouldn't you be down the street at the bakery defending donuts or something? Mind your own damn business, threw me into the back of their patrol car. They read me my rights first and waited until I had my motor skills back so I could nod my head that I understood them. When they put me in the patrol car, I heard my neighbors telling the police about everything. Even Tina snitched on me. As we drove away, I heard the officer tell Greg that he had enough grounds to get a restraining order against me. What hurt me the most was seeing how much Greg suffered from what I did. Didn't he understand that I was doing this for his sake? The other thing that hurt me was seeing Elise come and hug Greg and lead him inside. She thanked the police for their quick action. Even those damn Gestapo agents were in love with her. When we arrived at the station, all the police were talking about how sweet she was and how beautiful she was. I knew I was in trouble. I called my lawyer. He arrived and called Wanda. She pulled me out. I knew that paying her back would cost me most of my savings. I was paying her rent and buying tons of clothes to make me look sexy, so I wasn't really saving. Then I did something else, stupid. When I was released from the cell, in front of Wanda, my lawyer, and a bunch of cops, I said, Whenever I get the chance, I'm going to ruin this bitch. I'm going to show her how to take my husband and family away from me. I guess I was just really angry. My lawyer quickly covered my mouth with his hand and took me out of there. Why did you make a threat against someone in the middle of a police station? He asked me. Why did you especially do this in front of the police who just arrested you for trying to break into the house where the person you threatened lived? I just looked at the floor. I was angry, I said in a quiet voice. You just put another nail in the coffin of your marriage, he said. You better sign those papers now, while you can still get the 80-20 split. I returned to Wanda's house with her. Wanda has always been calm and calculating. 
I told her everything that happened today, hoping that she could help me. As my best friend, I expected more sympathy from her. I think you should still give him a divorce, she said. But tell him you're going to get counseling for your problems and would like to start over after therapy. Maybe you could start dating again. You need to try to rebuild some of the bridges you've broken. If you tell your lawyer you agree to the divorce and sign the papers immediately, but only if you get a private meeting with Greg, they might agree. Then you can pour out your heart to him. If you speak convincingly enough, he might even call off the divorce, she said. It sounded like the only option. Now I had no other way to even talk to him due to the restraining order against me. It worked. Cheers, Wanda. I was glad she was on my side. The next morning I met with my lawyer and Greg's lawyer to sign the papers. Greg was very generous. It seemed that even though he still resented me, part of him still loved me. He changed the papers and gave me the right to visit on certain holidays and on my birthday and their birthdays too. I could also come and visit the children at any time, but I had to call first. He also gave me a 60-40 split, which was much more than I had ever hoped for. He didn't pay me child support because I worked, but I didn't have to pay child support. He even took out a loan and gave me 40% of the value of our house, minus what we still owed on it. My lawyer was happy, which meant I could pay him. As soon as I signed the papers, I got a meeting with Greg. I was told that I could not touch him or go near his side of the table. I had 15 minutes to plead with him. I didn't like it. I've heard of cases where a woman poured out her heart and her ex-husband didn't even say a word to her, just got up and left. So I told them that Greg should talk to me too. They left and returned five minutes later. After I expressed everything I had, Greg made a statement and also asked me some questions. I demanded that Elise not be there. I wanted this meeting to be just between Greg and me. Greg came into the room and sat down opposite me. I started talking, tears flowing from my eyes. I so wanted him to just hug me and tell me that everything would be okay. I told him everything. I told him about how old and unattractive I felt. I told him about how bored we were in our lives. I told him how upset I was by the frequency with which he wanted sex. I told him what Wanda had told me and how she was fueling her marriage. I told him about the club and how Wanda and I tried to get him into it. I told him how Wanda told me that I would have to do it myself and then take everything I learned back to him. I told him all the things I had learned about sex and wanted to share with him. I told him how, after all of this, I truly realized that nothing was wrong with our lives in the first place. I told him how what I thought was just boring marital sex was actual, much more intimate and much better than just being a gun needle for a bunch of guys who didn't care about me. Finally, I told him that if he gives me another chance, I can be the best wife he has ever had, and this will never happen again. I knew the value of what we had now, and I would never risk it again. When Greg saw that I had finished, he had tears in his eyes too. I really thought I had a chance, so I felt good. From the first moment I saw you, I loved you with all my heart, Greg told me. The reason I always insisted on sex was because you always turned me on. I didn't care if you got a little older or wider. You were my wife and the love of my life. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. My life. I wanted to see us grow old and gray and sit in rocking chairs together and see what happens next, he said. I nodded my head because this was exactly what I wanted. You were like my soulmate, he said. Then you started lying to me and scheming and cheating on me. Now you're telling me it was just a weird phase you were going through. Like when I decided to see what it would look like if I put black rims on a Mustang. Just this. It didn't just waste some money and make my car look ugly. It ruined our lives and our children's lives. I'm sorry, I said tearfully. You started by lying to me about wanting to have sex with other people, he said. Then you drugged me and let other men touch you in front of me. You let someone else touch something that should have been mine alone. Hell, I don't even let people drive my car, let alone that. Then you left me and our children to become a bitch with God knows how many men. It didn't go so well. But I didn't like it, I said. I did it for our sake. To add spice to our marriage. Joyce, I don't even like spicy food. So why the hell would I add spice to something I already loved? You said it yourself, I wanted sex with you all the time. Does it seem like we needed more spice? 
You say you had sex with all these guys for us, but you didn't like it. I didn't like it either, so how was it done for us? I... I... Maybe you should talk to Wanda, I said. I don't want to hear anything from Wanda, he replied sharply. I warned you that you would end up just like her. What do you mean? I asked. Wanda rekindled her marriage. Now she and Danny get along great. They both have sex with a lot of people and it doesn't bother them. Maybe we're different. I don't want to have sex with anyone but you anymore, at least. We learned that we are best suited for each other. Sometimes you have to try new things to learn something. Joyce, you're just like Wanda, you're divorced, he said. Danny and Wanda got divorced three years ago, which is why they don't care if each other has sex with other people. And by the way, maybe you don't want to have sex with other people anymore, but I don't want to have sex with you anymore. I'm too afraid of catching something, and you don't always have to try new things to learn. I know I wouldn't like living with a cheater, but I didn't have to try that to learn. He turned to leave. No, I screamed. What do you mean Wanda is divorced? Who told you that? I asked. And you can't leave. The meeting isn't over yet. Danny told me, and so did Elise, he said. And I promised you 15 minutes, it was half an hour. I promised you that I would talk to you, and I did. I promised you that I would ask questions, and I did. But to make you feel better, how about one more question? I nodded, hoping that something he wanted to know might tip the balance in my favor. You had sex with all those guys I saw on video, at Wanda's house and at the club, right? He asked. I nodded slowly. Were you under the influence or forced to do it? I shook my head sadly. Then you willingly broke your marriage vows for some reason. So, just like this meeting, our marriage is over, he said. Then he got up and left. I ignored my lawyer's words when he told me how gracefully we came out of this situation. As soon as I left the building, I saw Greg's Mustang drive away. I spent several days in a deep depression. My parents took pity on me and took me in. For the first few months, I rarely took calls or left the house. Then I started visiting children. Greg trusted my parents enough to allow them to bring their children to visit me at their home. My kids were fine. Sometimes they looked at me strangely. I had to admit that the visits weren't something they looked forward to. They were kids. They didn't understand that I was depressed. They just saw me as another adult who wasn't fun to hang out with. Their world revolved around love and fun. Greg loved them, and it seemed Elisa did too. So to them, I was like just another crazy old aunt they were forced to spend time with. My daughter later told me that they only came because Elise took them out for ice cream when they returned. That's when I tried to attack Elise and they got a restraining order. Imagine my surprise when Greg stepped between us to protect her. I had a perfect life and I blew it. Or so it seemed to me at first. In reality, my life was stolen from me. After I began to recover from my depression, I received a call from Wanda. Her sister was getting married and she wanted me to come. She said her biggest problem had been solved and I was partly responsible for solving it. I thought something I said might have helped her with her sister. I was wrong. I still thought I had never met her sister. However, weddings have always made me feel better. There was always something about seeing two people in love begin their journey together that always made me cry with happiness. When I came to church, I saw many of my old friends. Some of them looked at me strangely. When Greg came out and stood next to the minister, I almost died of a heart attack. I ran out of the church. Wanda followed me. Wanda was my best friend. I knew that in her mind it was something that was going to help me move forward in my life. Maybe she thought that seeing Greg move on would make me realize that I should too. I turned to her to force her to explain. She had the biggest smile on her face. Why did she always smile? Wanda, I said, you're my best friend. Why did you want me to see that? Wanda laughed until she cried. I'm not your best friend, she laughed. I can't stand you. From the very first time I talked to you, I told you I had a problem, didn't I? I never cared about your damn problems, only mine. I was shocked. I told you from the beginning that my family wanted me to find someone for my little sister, Elise, she continued. I even told you that all the guys I date are players. She's beautiful, she's smart, she's so sweet, 
but she's not like me. She's not ambitious. She's not a bitch. She just wants to be a wife and mother. She had an accident in high school, so she can't have her own children. The light started to come on for me as Wanda spoke. So I had to find the perfect guy for her, Wanda said. And I found the perfect guy for her, Greg. He's smart, he's handsome, he's loyal, he's loving, and he already has kids. He also seemed to really love his wife, no matter what she looked like. And frankly, he's too good. For you, he only had one problem. She looked at me and smiled. He needed to get rid of 140 pounds of ugly, useless fat, also known as you, she said. In order for my little sister to be happy, you had to be eliminated. Getting rid of your fat ass was surprisingly easy. You were already complaining about being unhappy and bored. You wanted a more exciting life. That's what you asked for. I gave you what you wanted, my sister to be able to get what she wanted. It was a win-win situation for everyone. She laughed. I knew I couldn't just say, hey, stupid, can you divorce your husband so my little sister can have him? So I used this whole open marriage thing to get you out of the way, she said. The way I saw it, your marriage was like a very strong door. You and Greg were on one side of it, and my sister was on the other side. I looked at her as if I was seeing her for the first time. But it was stupid, I said. It really wouldn't have worked. The whole time I was having sex, Greg didn't even know. He didn't even have sex with your stupid sister before we got divorced, so she can't be that great. If he didn't find out what happened at the club, I would have brought him back. If your sister was so wonderful, all her tricks would have to work harder to win his heart and make him forget me. Funny bunny, said Wanda. Elise didn't know any of this. She really is so sweet. She just naturally fell in love with Greg. She only knew that his wife had gone off to have sex with other men and left him and their children. She fell in love with him at first sight. And in his children, too. She never tried to seduce him. They just became close. She was not part of the plan. Nothing about their mutual love was planned or fake. It would not last. Now they will be together for the rest of their lives and have you thank you for that. And you're right. Greg didn't give up on you. The whole time you were selling yourself, he still loved you and hoped you would come back. He fought his attraction to my sister for months. He needed to see your videos to free himself from you. That's why I took them off, and that's why I gave them to his lawyer. I was beside myself with shock. All this time I was sure that she was on my side, but she actually orchestrated the collapse of my marriage. You, I said stupidly. Then the words left me. She started laughing again. See you later, she said. I'm having a wedding. I felt like 007 after the villain told him about his evil plan to take over the world. Only Wanda was smart enough to wait until she won to show off. I was too outplayed to even want revenge against her. She probably would have won again anyway. I just wanted my life back. When she returned to the church, something clicked in me. From then on, I was obsessed with getting my life back. I came here and watched the house every day, hoping to see signs that they are breaking up or unhappy. Unfortunately, there were no such signs. I hoped against all hopes that someday Elise would get bored or become as complacent and stupid as I was. I'm pretty sure this won't happen, but this is my only chance. Either cancer or some other disease that will tear her apart and take her out of the game. I know I have this stupid restraining order that says I have to stay at least 500 feet from the house. I'm probably 300 feet away from him as I look through my binoculars. Who will know the difference? To hell with this restrictive regulation. As I tried to focus the binoculars, I felt them being torn out of my hands. Another damn cop was talking to me. Who am I, officer? I thought I was staying at 500 feet. No, no need for handcuffs, officer. Crap! Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one.